wolves howling again in our forests after being hunted to extinction in the 18th century is a huge and distant stretch of the imagination, maybe evocative of Bram Stoker's Count Dracula. Listen to them, the children of the night. What music they make. But exciting for others like Becky Copeland and George Hyde, working at the Wildwood Trust in East Devon with this new young pack of grey wolves from Sweden. She's feeding from your hand. She is, yes. Yeah. These wolves were hand raised, so they're um, quite social. So we can hand feed through the fence. The ultimate aim of the research that we conduct is to make rewilding more of a possibility. To have wolves once again back in the British landscape would be a fascinating adventure, a real thrilling conclusion to all the work that we do. Tell me why the wolf would benefit the UK. Our landscapes are being shaped by animals such as sheep and deer. Wolves would provide a certain amount of natural culling of deer population, but in a way that people are not able to, wolves would affect the behaviour of deer. They would spend less time in the areas where they graze, and as a consequence, those areas would be able to recover and biodiversity in those areas would increase. Visitors at the Wildwood Trust are divided. Would you be happy to live with wolves? roaming the countryside? Definitely. I, I guess the highlands of Scotland and maybe Brecon Beacons, that sort of thing. Wolves might be macabre for some, but the list of reintroductions is growing. Wild boar, beaver and great bustard, the latter aided by Paul O'Donoghue, now with the Lynx UK Trust, which says an application is imminent to natural England and Scottish natural heritage to reintroduce the lynx to the Kilda Forest on the Scottish border to boost biodiversity. When we first started, people were always talking about if it happens. Now, the first question I'm asked is when. <laughs> Any livestock loss that does occur, and we expect it to be absolutely minimal, farmers will be fully compensated. Our fell land runs within walking distance of the release site on the edge of Kielder. Let's take some shelter in this farm while there's a downpour. Susan and Dennis Salt, you farm on the Scottish border. Tell me what you think about the possible lynx reintroduction here. They're predators. And we've got lambs, we'll have calves being born. I mean, the, the knock-on effect of the armed agricultural industry will be widespread. Where is the country's food going to come from? If we don't produce lamb, meat, beef, where is it all going to come from? If farm, hill farms like this are very important to the food. Back to Devon and George Hyde at the Wildwood Trust. Where does biodiversity end? Where does this argument end? I mean, would you like to see the reintroduction of the bear? Are you asking me personally? I, I think yes. Uh, it'd be hugely beneficial. It's a little like the moonshot. When in the 60s we decided that we were going to go to the moon, uh, in a similar way, if we were to work towards um, a point where we could have wolves and lynx and bears safely released into the, uh, the British landscape, what we would have learned in the process would be hugely beneficial to biodiversity, our relationship with our natural landscape. A carnival of animals, summed up by Henry David Thoreau, writing in the mid-19th century about the loss of the nobler animals. I cannot but feel as if I lived in a tamed and, as it were, emasculated country. Is it not a maimed and imperfect nature I am conversing with? I should not like to think that some demigod has come before me and picked out some of the best of the stars. I wish to know an entire heaven and an entire earth.